16, volume 1, aircraft noise, and volume 2, aircraft engine emissions. So KCA is currently on it. As we are talking, I think we should be concluding this exercise next week. So these are new regulations that are coming. We will expunge this from airworthiness regulations and put them to where they belong. With that kind of enabling regulations, then the authority will have enabling regulations to start this kind of work. But meanwhile, there's something going on. So if you look at uh, the others filing reports 26, we've discussed at length 24. It's also noted there's nothing to change there. 23, 2. 23 is where responsibilities of the authority on continuing airworthiness. That is 1E, ensure that the aircraft is maintained in an airworthy. We have taken this. I think the gap we have since uh, time immemorial is with regard to general aviation regulations. Because currently these regulations we've done are from international general aviation, international commercial, international helicopter. So what we have referenced here, we will look at it internally and see how we can capture it to incorporate all and not only these ones in this commercial in AOC regulations. Because AOC is for commercial only. What about the others who are not commercial? We look at that particular item. Yes. Yeah. Ah, you mean the damage assessment report? Eh? Okay, that is 23. Now this one is a standard. It's from ICAO, Annex, on damage to an aircraft. Now, it sends us to again ICAO Doc 9760, if you search damage. That is where we are going to do a technical guidance material to guide the people. To guide the industry and explicitly say who are these persons that will do the damage assessment. It doesn't have to be a, an approved maintenance organization. It can be somebody who is qualified, it can be an AMO. All options have been given there. And we could not specify here. That's why we are saying prepared and certified by persons specified by the authority. Because we are going to specify that, that in the TGM, which we don't have right now. There is no guidance material here. Yes. No. ICAO has already specified this in the doc, 9760. So we are just going to borrow from that guidance and specify those people because from ICAO perspective, it's broad. Even this damage assessment can be done by state of design. It can be done by state of manufacture, depending on the level of damage. So we will put all these people there because the person could mean a person by name according to that definition or a person by organization. So KCA will specify who will do the damage assessment. I hope that's good enough. And then, With regard to special flight permits, we looked at it and we uh, did it in line with ICAO again. The only thing that we borrowed from UK, Air Navigation Orders, is the Certificate of Fitness for Flight, which has been there under air conditions all along. All we have done now is that if, you, if your COV has lapsed because of damage, not because of dates, it's invalidated, and you have done some kind maybe of a mode, because if you are doing a mode, it means that COV is not current, as much as the dates are current. Flying within the country, doing a test flight to validate the modification that has been done on the aircraft, and like coming to KCA to be issued with a special flight permit. So those are things we have reflected on 41, if you read from top to bottom. Then the issue of special flight, the normal one, remains with a special flight permit. We have demarcated them. Thank you. OK. Yeah, it is in line with the same. I will start with the easy ones, then go to the hard ones. Kindly regulation 46 on the screen.
Yeah, there we are, 46. Yeah, uh, just kindly, just look at this one, two, and three, and this under damage to the air, to aircraft. This regulation is repeated in regulation 23, two and below. Maybe you can go now to 23, 23. and see that the same. But you have, you've, you've first seen the contents of these three, so that I you want see you to see, difference. is word for word? Yeah. Yes, let's go to now 23. Uh, this is just a suggestion. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, even if you want to repeat it 10 times. Uh, from uh, 23.2. Yeah, from 23.2, except, it's okay, no, no. 23.2, yep. there you are. From up there all the way down, except for 2 Roman 2, the rest is a repetition. So you can look at it and see how to reconcile their repetition. I've informed the that's and is accepted is actually a repetition. That's for your knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, yes. Yeah. Now let's go to the same regulation H. Just go up. Oh, no, 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 sorry, down. Down, upward. The, yes. Now he's talking about ensure that in respect of aeroplanes above 5,700 and helicopters about 3,175. I just want a clarification. Is this regulation for aircrafts that are above those weights or it is for all aeroplanes? This particular regulation? No, I'm talking about this the general regulation 23. This particular hedge or the entire regulation? So the entire regulation, which means all aeroplanes below 5,700 and the helicopters below 3,175 are not covered in that, this regulation. As far this regulation, yes. Because this is an ICAO standard from an ex I agree. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually, if it is covering everything, probably then we should put it up so that it shows that everything is, 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 is for this particular category of aeroplanes. That's what I'm requesting so that we are clear because sometimes we get confusion because uh, we've, when we come to you, you will lump all of them together under this regulation. So, and that's why I'm asking. I'll leave that with you. Now let us go to the same regulation um, two. Yeah, Roman two. First, this is a new, new regulation you have included. I think it shows important for you to tell us that this is a new regulation. It wasn't there before. Now, it is the same thing that uh, uh, Fred Oport, my colleague, has been talking about. I had raised the same thing in the last meeting in December. If you can remember the wording of that particular regulation at that time, was the owner operator shall be required to submit to the authority a damage assessment report prepared by the manufacturer. Those were the wordings. By the manufacturer. If you want, I can reproduce because I had downloaded the matrix at that particular time and I have it now. What is my concern here? You have rewarded to include certified by person specified by the authority. I don't think my objection to that was one, we have no capability, we, we, we don't have to request an assessment report from the manufacturer. We have capable people to do the same thing here. And the manufacturer has provided us with the necessary document to repair aeroplanes because this is in line with the damaged aeroplanes. The other one is if you go to the matrix, the reference you have given from IKEA Annex. Yeah. 
Yeah, which particular? So same, same regulation, okay. uh, 23, 2 Roman uh, 2, the one I've just shown to you now. I want to show because you gave a reference in the matrix. Yeah, there it is. Although, although here it is, you can see it is 3 Roman 1, but in the regulation it is 2 Roman uh, 2. The reference you have given there, Annex 8, Part 2, 4.2.3 of IQ, I have been there and I haven't seen that as a standard. If you want to project it right now and uh, show it to me, I'll appreciate, I will apologize that I am wrong. But maybe because of time, I'm not able let me, to Let me it, finish. Scroll down like, a little bit. Like you, yeah. you have gone ahead and given us, just go, the other reference from NORC 9760. Just, yeah. just go down. Let's look at the, all the references there. Yeah, that is Doc 9760, chapter 4.6.2.4.9.j at all. Are you in it, part it is, two, part let me, one, let me part just six. finish. It is, I'll, I'll tell you, as I said, I am willing to be correct and apologize in front of everybody if I am wrong. The correct reference, which is in the doc, is 4.6.2.4.j. So remove the nine, then you will find something there. But what I think I'm willing to be corrected, but don't tell us it's a standard if it is not. And I think this is the problem I'm, I've been talking about. We need the guidance from a source. And if it's not the source and you think something is good for us, we don't mind. So if we go back to the regulation and now you say a person or was the person specified by the authority, I guarantee you it is subject to abuse. It is subject to abuse. What you have done, Mary, is to remove from the manufacturer and say, ah, somebody specified, and now what you're going to do is you will send me to the manufacturer. Thank you, Amin. I think that's a long lecture. I can see the, uh, see, yes. the pain, the pain yeah. from your voice. I can see, feel you. See, I see, I, yes, but I, what I, 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 I'm, th I'm really happy you've understood well. the pain. <laughs> I can see the pain because for the team that has sat and burnt the midnight oil from KCA, I can assure you it is a standard. Number one. Two, I will be gladly accept. I want us to and I apologize. Something. Call me yeah. to put it on the newspaper. I will yeah. do that. No, no, Thank no. Thank you. No. <laughs> It is, Ali, it's a, it is a standard. The export certificate of airworthiness, I don't want to save, save sure. you time. So okay, export certificate of airworthiness. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I think, I think we have import, or most of us have imported airplanes. I have not seen an export certificate of airworthiness with a time limit. It's always open-ended. I do not see why we want to differ or to be different. And there must be logic for this, some of these things. When you get an export certificate of airworthiness, it doesn't make the aircraft fly. You still need a certificate of airworthiness to fly the aeroplane. Issues, administrative issues can occur after you have an export certificate of airworthiness. The aircraft can be stuck on route, can remain in the country for other reasons. I request we go by the industry standard or best practice everywhere else. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Captain Amin. We've taken all your sentiments. We will invite you to our offices. We look at the standard versus the doc. Thank you for that submission. I think we, we are, we still have a long way to go. Mr. Gidai. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I appreciate with Amin's sentiments, and my recommendation is 
whatever he's pushing for is for the whole industry. So uh, we, 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 it needs to be handled in open. I, I appreciate. First is to commend uh, on uh, the extension on as provided for in Regulation 12. I, I believe that is uh, uh, a step in the right direction. Uh, and it will definitely, this is one of the regulations that uh, is uh, facilitating for, for growth and less bureaucracy. Uh, my recommendation, I think I'd put it earlier, but it was not captured well, but uh, I'd like to recommend on regulation 27, 27 I believe it's 27, um, 27, 4. Uh, to ask the community who we fly without wings. I think, um, yeah. A recommendation, um, my recommendation is having some experience in this area and having also having uh, di some discussions with some of the inspectors that we, in, we include, uh, because it says uh, a person licensed by the authority operating a balloon for use of an AOC may perform uh, maintenance. Uh, this is the practice now. I will highly, because, because we, we have to grow the industry,